Let's glean a few things from what God has done with him. After that, the next voice you're going to be here is the servant of God tonight to be a blessing to us. Let's receive the Bible. An apostle, an apostle of apostles, a trailblazer, a trailblazer with an uncommon anointing. Apostle Geoffrey Selman is a minister of the gospel and the president of Eternity Network International, an interdenominational Christian organization based in Abuja, Nigeria. He started preaching the gospel at a young age with a God-given mandate to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit through signs and wonders. He is the host of Kononia, a weekly program under the umbrella of Eternity Network International, where people from all over the world come to experience worship, word, miracles and the love of God. Known for his deep love for people and the body of Christ, Apostle Selman is committed to bringing many to the reality of the deep relationship with the Holy Spirit and inspire a generation to love and seek Christ. Today, he has become one of the leading voices stirring a reawakening to the true purpose of the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You One more time. God Sing, you are, God alone. you are God alone. From before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. Father, we thank you for tonight. With our hands lifted to Jesus, the author and even the finisher of our faith, we pray that tonight will be a night of extraordinary encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ, give us marvelous visitations by your spirit. Let your word come with power. And whilst the word comes, oh God, we pray that the sick be healed. We pray that the oppressed be delivered. Lift us to higher dimensions in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Give Jesus a big hand clap. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again, may I request you to help me as we honor a veteran of the gospel indeed. A father... And one who has become one of the leading voices, his eminence, Archbishop Duncan Williams and his dear wife. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Again, to all the leaders here at the Action Chapel, and then by extension, all who minister in word and in doctrine across the entire, I can guarantee you by the Spirit that the version of you that came here is not the version that will go back. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. Therefore, let your faith rise. Let your expectations be high. Jesus is in the midst of his people. And he will be glorified tonight in Jesus' name. Please be seated. God bless you. By the way, did I tell you that you are an amazing family? Absolutely amazing. God bless you. Amazing church family here in Ghana. Let me start tonight by reading a very important scripture and then we'll begin our discourse from there. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. 
1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. He said, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and brought your fathers up from out of the land of Egypt so that every time you see a man make progress in life, behind that advancement, it is the Lord. He says, it is the Lord that advanced Moses. You would see Moses making progress. You would see Aaron making progress. But the Bible says, behind every advancement is the marvelous hand of God. May that be so for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now I begin my teaching. Second Chronicles, please, chapter 15 and verse 3. There are three things that if found missing in any territory, three things, if found missing in any territory, darkness will reign over that territory, oppression will reign over that territory, and these three things are reflected in this scripture. The Bible says, now for a long season, Israel had been without, number one, the true God. Number two, without a teaching priest. And number three, without law. So, the formula for decadence and retrogression and servitude and lack of advancement at a territorial scale is number one, the absence of the one true God. Number two, the absence of the teaching priest. Number three, the absence of principles that govern civil living within a territory. Are we together now? So, if the devil wants to oppress Ghana or Africa or Europe or America or any part at all, the first thing he does is he attacks their conviction so that with time, subliminally, they will get to a point where they do not acknowledge the one true God. John 17 and verse 3, Jesus is praying now. He says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, not one of them, the only true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. We live in times where it almost becomes um, like a threat to civilization when you advocate that there is a God in heaven who rules over the affairs of men. When you mention the name Jesus, when you communicate anything that is reflective of spirituality, there are systems and structures already built in place to fight anything God. But can I tell you this? Any territory that rejects God is a territory that will use their short lifetime paying that price. Let every other name fade away. Ghana, listen. Let every other name fade away. Until there's only you, let every other name stay away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. That's our declaration over this land. Let every other name fade away. Ah. Let every other name fade away. That's only you Let every other name fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place The Bible says And Adam knew his wife again And she bore him a son And he called him Seth and it says, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. That means there was a time that they forgot to call upon the name of the Lord. 
there are things that must be born for, to remind men again. There are revivals, there are prophetic dimensions. Oftentimes when people forget about God, all he needs to do is take one step out of their lives and in their pain and their distress, they will remember that there is the one true God. For a long time, there was no acknowledgement of that one true God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, when you read from verse 5 to 7, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, not some, acknowledge him. To acknowledge means to, play, to place value and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, do not be wise in your own eyes. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Through the technological advancement, advancement in medicine and IT, and all of these kinds of things as the world continues to evolve, it seems as though we are getting to a place where we do not see the importance of God in our lives, in nation building again. God looks like an alternative to failures. That means if you lack prosperity, if you lack intellectual advancement, educationally speaking, and you do not have any opportunity for influence, then you can console yourself by being spiritual. Listen carefully. The nation that rejects God is a nation that has rejected its future. The family that rejects God is the family that would have given up the future. The destiny that rejects God is a destiny that will spend its lifetime paying the price. For except the Lord builds the house, my Bible says they labor but in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch it but in vain. He says it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late only to eat the bread of sorrow. There is only one who can give his beloved sleep. God. Are we together? Very simple message, but you must pay attention. The nation of Israel, once and again, they found themselves deviating from the ways of God. Moses went up the mountain to receive the commandments and just for 90 days, he returned back and he met all kinds of spiritual halotry. They had built an image with the same resources that they would be using in the future to build him a temple. And they said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. I can tell you one thing with God. When the Bible says God is a jealous God, jealousy is not a negative attribute. Jealousy is like a gun. It depends on who is holding it. If a military man is holding that gun, good for you. If an armed robber is holding that gun, bad for you. So jealousy is the quality that makes you protective of anything that you have. So when the Bible says God is a jealous God, it is that quality in him that insists that the devil does not take advantage of you because you are his. And he expressed that jealousy by saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love, he says, and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. As great and mighty as God is, he was not ashamed to declare his vulnerability over his creation that he also calls his bride. Are we blessed? So my first charge tonight, before I begin to pray and minister, is that Ghana as a nation and every region must consciously return to a place where you acknowledge that there is the one through God. Listen to me. The God of heaven is not a nuisance to civilization. He began civilization. Are we together now? Yes. God is not anti-advancement. That was why I gave you that scripture. That it was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Behind the exploits of men in this kingdom 
brothers and sisters, is the mysterious hand of God lifting men, opening doors. Nicodemus came to Jesus, John chapter 3. Please give it to us, verse 1. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man, verse 2 now, sent from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except. There are things that the world of men cannot afford. You can't find it in a bank. You can't find it in a school. The power of God is not saved in a bank. The power of God cannot be found under the earth. It's not a mineral resource. If you see a man walk in that dimension, it is God that gave it. Are we together? Listen to me. There are times that we think our intellectual prowess, and now I'm speaking apostolically, not just to the nation of Ghana, but to Africa and also the globe. We, we are coming to times where men are becoming embarrassed and ashamed to acknowledge that spirituality remains an advantage to men. Listen to me. There are times when your boat can be good. Oh, Peter. There are times when your knowledge of fishing will be intact. There are times when the net will be good but you will still not catch fish. Are we together? There are times where your inability to catch fish is not reflective of laziness. You went to the sea with a boat that was functional, with a skill that was functional, with a net that can catch fish, except that the earth is the Lord's. And so if it does not direct fish, you cannot catch fish. We must unashamedly, as a nation and a continent, submit our understanding to this rabbi of the ages. He's called the ancient of days. He has an advantage of time. Please give us that scripture again. Second Chronicles 5, 15, 3. Second Chronicles 15, 15, 3. So the first is without a true God. There can be many gods. When you mention God in our world today, God means anything. Including yourself. Including your mind including your bank account, including your certificate. But let me tell you this. The jealousy of God is so strict that anything that stands his place in your life, he will fight it even if he's the one who gave it to you. The moment it finds its way to sit in that position that is exclusive to God, you have declared war. And did you know that this God is also a warrior? When he fights, he does not lose. Let me tell you why many blessings, even from God, destroy us. Because when we receive every good and perfect gift that the Bible says comes from above, we exalt it to a point where it pushes God out of our lives. So your certificate, your intelligence, very necessary, but you can exalt it to push God out of your life. The opportunity to be blessed financially, whatever it is that he's given you, the safest position of a believer is when you submit yourself alongside everything that constitutes an advantage to your life under the government of the Christ. To exalt him above everything, above thrones and above dominions. Can I tell you this? If your child is thoroughly educated, but does not know God, something is still missing. If your child is responsible and yet does not know God, something is still missing. Do not look at the knowledge of God and passion for the things of God as an added advantage to profitable living. It is the basis of 
It's a very simple but powerful charge tonight. May we never exalt anything whatsoever. No. The woman with the alabaster box taught us a lesson. The Bible says she brought before him an alabaster box of pure nard. It was worth a year's wages. And the Bible says she came at the feet of the master. And one synoptic account says she broke it. She didn't pour it. To pour it means that she was connected to part of it. She broke everything at his feet. And then she used her hair that the Bible says is the glory of a woman to wash his feet. When it has to do with him that sits upon the throne, even if you are an elder with a golden crown, you remove it. The Bible says the elders with their golden crown, that their elders alone is deserving of honor, and then with a golden crown. But they are able to unashamedly remove that crown and cry before him that was, him that is, and him that is that is to come. Ghana, here is the formula that must remain in your nation. In the beginning, God. <laughs> Genesis 1 verse 1. I taught you on patterns yesterday. Not in the beginning, technology. Not in the beginning, ministry. Not in the beginning, banking. In the beginning, when you compromise on this formula, the formidability of your structure will no longer be there. It matters that God is priority, not just that he is there. I can come to your house and you can leave me at the veranda or the balcony. I'm in your house, but that is not an honorable position. Is that true? There are visitors who come to our houses and we leave them at the gate. It's a level of honor. There are others who may be in the compound but not inside the house. But there are others we can even take them to the bedroom as an expression of our depth of confidence and intimacy. So do not tell me that God is in your life. Where in your life is he? Do not smuggle him in the midst of a plethora of activities and then he occupies position 50 or 51 he's in your life but his jealousy will not rest until he becomes number one so don't tell me you are saved don't say you are a christian god is calling us tonight to a point where as a united people we must come to a point where he becomes king of kings Lord of lords and Lord of all. Are we together? I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way, bring me back to you. an example that nobody gives him all and remains down the Bible declares no eye has seen nor ear heard that means no dimension of revelation has gotten there 
no dimension of the prophetic has gotten there. A state where God has prepared the things for them that love him. More than a man of God, more than a businessman. There are things with God that is a love issue. Only genuine lovers of God can move past that realm. Please hear what I'm telling you. You can be a prayer warrior and not be a lover of God. You can be a diligent man of God and not be a lover of God. You can be a philanthropist and not be a lover of God. I'm not just calling on those who work for God. I'm not just calling on those who know about God. You can know about me by reading my books, but you know me by meeting me. My obsession and my passion has been to lead this campaign across the nations that there is a God in heaven. The king in his pride, negating the authority and the government of God, was turned to a beast, not a parable. It happened for seven years. A beast with the brain of a human to remind him that there was a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. Can I tell you, just because God is silent does not mean he's weak. There are times where God can arise. Are we blessed? Let me encourage all who love and serve his purposes, especially co-laborers. Let us love God more than ministry. Ministry can become an idol. Let us love God more than church. Love God more than prayer group. Love God more than whatever it is. Whatever you do only finds relevance to the degree to which your love is intact. I love him more than ministry. I will give up ministry a thousand times to protect my love for him. Hear what the psalmist said. He says, better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. That I rather be a doorkeeper. That's how much he desired his presence. No wonder he was a man who was called a man after God's heart. That was a testimony that not even Moses got, even though he met God face to face. Can I tell you this? The greatest testimony in my life, at the end of my life, if I have a testimony, I want the nations to know. It should not be that I traveled around the world bringing the power and the glory of God. It shouldn't be that this was another apostle and another revivalist. I covered the testimony of Enoch and Enoch walked with God. So I'm bringing to your consciousness again dear Ghana, dear Africa, Dear earth, there is a God that sits in heaven. He's not one of those superstitious cosmic realities. He's the God of the universe. And he sent his son Jesus. The Bible calls Jesus the express image of the invisible God. Jesus, a revelation of the love of the Father. Jesus calls himself the way and the truth and the life. Jesus, the epicenter of the Christian faith. That the moment your faith is hinged around any other auxiliary spiritual activity outside of Jesus, you are already in error. The Bible calls him the author and the finisher. He cannot be omega over what he's not alpha over. He has to be alpha before he becomes omega. So if you do not start with him and he meets you somewhere in the journey of your life, you will go back again. The only way he becomes omega is if you allow him become alpha. Listen, the idea of Jesus is more than a Christian idea. The idea of Jesus is more than a philosophical idea. The one who is today enthroned according to the communication of the apostles in Acts chapter 2 that he has been enthroned, Acts chapter 2 and 3, Lord and Christ. 
enthroned today. Romans chapter 10, from verse 9 and 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth, not I am a Christian, the Lordship of Jesus. You know you are a believer in Christ. You know you have become part of the fold. Listen carefully. Not to the degree to which you go to church. Not to the, 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 the degree to which you are a worker in church. As profitable as that is. There must be an exact experience in your life where Jesus becomes Savior. Jesus becomes Lord. Jesus becomes King. There are many people in church who might be on their way to hell because they are around the things of God but they have not made up their minds in total surrender to come to Jesus. Emmanuel God is with He shall reign, he shall reign, he shall reign forevermore. For a long time, Israel had no true God. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. All the streets in Ghana and all the regions in Ghana must know that Jesus is Lord. This is not the activity of evangelists. No. The whole assignment of a witness. Can I tell you this? I'm not teaching on this now. I'm sure that God will grant another platform for us to discuss this. But the principal assignment of every believer in Christ is found in John 1, 6 and 7. The Bible says there was a man. It did not say sent from his father. There was a man, verse 6, called you, sent from God. You only pass through the territory of Ghana. So you assume the identity of a Ghanaian. But by your divine and prophetic revelation, the Bible says you were sent. Truly, like an arrow from eternity into time. If you pass through the U.S., they would call you a citizen of U.S. If you pass through the soil of Ghana, by Ghanaian descent, they will call you a Ghanaian. But more than your territorial connection, the Bible reveals to you. Please give us that scripture. There was a man sent from God. When he got to the earth, they gave him an earthly name called John. Like they gave the world an earthly name called Jesus. His original name was not Jesus. There are footballers today called Jesus. There are Mexicans called Jesus. Their name does not carry power because it is an office. It is not the pronunciation of the name. It is the revelation of the office. The Bible says the same came for one purpose, for a witness. John was not a Baptist. John was not a prophet. Baptism and prophecies were simply strategies to make his witness effective. He was a witness. Even Jesus himself, revelations when he appeared to John in the Isle of Patmos when he was banished, the Bible starts by saying, Revelations 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto his servant John, that is to show him the things that would come to pass. And he sent it and signified by his angel. When you read on, he calls Jesus the faithful witness. So generically speaking, our assignments as believers is to be witnesses. A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention over a claim. Then you are asked to, to bring a witness. And a witness is only a witness if he has a token of truthfulness called evidence. 
if you do not have an evidence, you are not a faithful witness. This is why he's invested the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God. All of these provisions are equippings to make us effective witnesses. But my first call tonight is Ghana, Africa, planet Earth, one more time. Let us not allow history to teach us a lesson by repeating itself. There is one true God and Jesus whom he has sent. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave that one as at the time that was written, it was his one and only begotten son. But today we know by the authority of scripture that he is now the first begotten of we the brethren. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but to have everlasting life. Let me pause for a minute right now and please permit me to make an altar call before I continue. There are people here, I saw such a crowd of people, the overflows outside, even extending right almost to the gate. And there are thousands of others following by way of the TV station, by way of internet. I present to you Jesus, not as a religious, the head of a religion. I present to you Jesus as a representation of the love of the Father. This is the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the love of the Father revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Man being the object behind that love and then it extends to creation to the end that whosoever believes in him, the Bible says, that he should not perish but now become a recipient of his life and that life is more than eternal life. What we were given is more than eternal life. Because theologically speaking, not to create any confusion, but everybody really lives forever. It is location, not possibility of living. Everybody in hell will remain alive. Everybody in heaven will remain alive. When you read the story of Lazarus and the rich man, when they exited the earth, they did not cease to live. So when you win souls, you ask them, where do you want to spend eternity? Not will you. You will. The question is location. The life we have been given is more than an eternal life. It is God's life. The very life of God. The invincible, indestructible life. It is by that life and through the ministry of his spirit, the Bible says we have become partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Jesus is calling you not just to be another religious person. Jesus is calling you beyond a church goer. He wants to give you a new beginning. There are many people listening right now, listening outside all across Ghana. My first charge tonight is there people of God, one more time, I present to you this one who is Savior, this one who is Lord, this one who came as a reflection of the Father's love. He is why the Holy Spirit came. He is why the Holy Spirit is in us. He is the only basis for a life victorious and a life indomitable. I'm going to make this altar call and for constraint of space, I am going to ask you, when I'm done talking, to stand whether you are inside or outside. Two categories of people very quickly. Those who are saying, Apostle, I've heard about this Jesus thing, but I've not been very intentional about making that decision. And then number two, there are those who are saying, Apostle, I've been around church for a long time. I remember confessing my sins, but as it is, my life has gone haywire. I need Jesus very quickly you belong to any of those categories now here's what we're going to do um so that we don't congest this place will there be counselors will there be okay beautiful so now here's what will happen for those who are in here i'm going to ask you if you can very gently you don't have to push anybody 
as many who can stand here if this space is exhausted then you will just stand across the aisles when I pray with you then you will follow the counselors or you may return to your seat whatever instruction you are giving for those outside you don't need to come in you just move to your screen the overflows those following by way of TV or internet right where you are in your home your office you're going to make that decision I'm going to count one to five and I want you with the boldness and the determination of the prodigal son. The prodigal son said, how many hired servants has my father? And I'm here feeding with the swine. The Bible says he came to himself and here's what he said. I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And I am not worthy to be called your son, but take me as one of your servants. The Bible says, whilst he was on his way coming, the father came and embraced him, kissed him, restored his dominion and put a signet ring. I'm counting one to five. The Holy Spirit is talking to someone who must win that war tonight. Are you ready? One. Leave your seat if you're coming and come and stand here before Jesus. Let's celebrate them at John Chapel as they come. Everywhere. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Two, young and old, swallow your pride tonight and come to Jesus. He calls you as an expression of his love. Please don't kneel, stand so there can be more space. When I count five, I begin to pray. Someone is saying, Apostle, I don't think I'm a bad person, but I'm not sure I've made that decision. Stand up and join them. When the Titanic sank, there were only two lists. Those who died and those who survived. There is no sitting at the fence. If you are not sure, there is such a reality in the kingdom as the assurance of salvation. Come, join them. Join them. Join them. This is four now, the last count, and then we we'll begin to pray. If you're coming, please quickly come and join them. I want to pray with you. Now, for all of you who have responded to this altar call, acknowledging Jesus, please understand why you are here. Don't just be emotional, be very spiritual about this decision. The Bible records that with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Please lift your right hand high above your head. Everyone who is praying this prayer, all the overflows, please follow suit. And you who is praying in your home and everywhere you're connecting, right there where you are, Jesus is there. Please say this after me as loud as you can. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I declare that Jesus is my Savior. Help those under the anointing there. My Lord and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen and amen let me pray for you now father thank you for these ones that you have brought to yourself the bible says no man cometh to the father except through his son 
You have brought them by the authority of scripture. I declare your sins forgiven. And I call you recipients of the life of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that you enjoy the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That you are established in righteousness and you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. For in Jesus' name, I pray. And the church said, Amen. Now, okay, beautiful. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you turn to the back, you're going to see counselors waving their hands. I'd like you to politely follow them. They'll have a word with you and you'll rush back to your seat and join the service. Please, counselors, let's make it fast with them so that they can return to their seats. Let's celebrate a harvest of souls. Hallelujah. Back to our scripture, we have to finish up very quickly. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 3. We're working on that scripture now. For a long season, Israel was without the true God. And then number two, without a teaching priest. According to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible declares that I will give you pastors or shepherds who are after my heart. Jeremiah 3, 15. I will give you pastors who are after my heart. The Bible says they will feed you. Listen to me. The level of spiritual understanding of a territory is directly proportional to the quality of of the men and the women of God who are in that territory. Are we together? When the devil wants to bring a territory into a level of spiritual ignorance or decadence, all he needs to do is to invest his time distracting, confusing, and deviating the shepherds. Because the Bible says when there is no teaching priest, then there is no platform for methodical worship of believers. It means then that it is impossible for believers to grow and become men and women of power and stature. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, and Jesus increased. Even Jesus, the son of the living God, he increased in wisdom, he increased in stature, he increased in favor with God and with men. Everything that is alive grows. So if we are alive in Christ, it means that we should grow. Are we together? Generally, for many of you who have listened to my teachings, you would have heard me say this. And let me repeat it for the first time in Ghana. That the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. An encounter with Jesus. That means no matter what you give an unbeliever as a gift... If Jesus is not part of that gift, you really did not bless the unbeliever. But that when a believer becomes saved, leaving the believer at the corridors of the kingdom will only produce babes. And when there are children, the Bible says an heir, for as long as he's a child, Galatians 4, differeth not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. That means that his experience, even though a believer will not differ from what was his experience outside of the faith life. Why? Because it takes maturity and growth to walk in the experience of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So, the greatest need of a saved believer is transformation. Transformation by the sound exegesis of scripture. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 lists six doctrines that represent the foundational pillars of the Christian faith. If a believer is to mature, he talks about the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God. Number three, verse two, the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And verse three, he says, this we will do. If God permits. 
That means that we need to transit and to grow from the level of spiritual immaturity. Like I respectfully observed yesterday, the average believer in Africa needs to contend for greater levels of illumination to grow. We need to grow. And listen to me. There are two principal indices that measure the spiritual growth of a believer. Number one, you are growing as a believer to the degree to which you conform experientially to the image and the character of the Christ. That is the first biblical index to measure spiritual growth. Paul was speaking to those who were already saved and he said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. The first biblical index to measure spiritual growth is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. Number two, the second biblical index that is used to measure spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Mm. He told Job, he said, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? He says, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Next verse says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. It takes knowledge to rise. Paul was speaking and he said, I went up by revelation. By desire, I went up by revelation. Psalm 60 and verse 1, Arise and shine, for your light is come. Not your light is with us. Isaiah 60, I keep saying Psalm, Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, he says, shine, for your light is come. Not your light is available, it's when it comes to you. Ezekiel chapter 2, when you read from verse 1 and 2, the prophet received an instruction. Son of man, stand up upon your feet and let me speak to you, verse 1. And the Bible says he did not have the strength. Verse 2 says, and the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. Someone must leave this level of spiritual immaturity through transformation. Transformation. I beseech thee, Romans 12 and verse 1, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says, permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a construct of an understanding that was in Jesus. And the Bible says that we must sustain the mind of Christ. And that comes through the sound exegesis of doctrine. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Are we learning? There is Jesus the way. The methodology of the kingdom. You learn his ways. You learn the mysteries of the kingdom. Jesus was teaching. And in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, here's what he said. He said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It has been given unto you. Action Chapel, Ghana, to know. The word know there does not just mean to be aware that such a principle exists. It's the same word that is used between a husband and a wife. To know. Is a deeper level of fellowship. Teaching priests. This is therefore my respectful plea to the men and the women of God within this territory. Whilst on one hand I salute the magnificent work that we have done and continue to do as far as kingdom come is, kingdom come is concerned. Listen, there is a corporate call to rise up higher. There is a corporate call to go deeper into the things of God. 
there is a corporate call to move past the levels of peripheral teachings that do not bring edification and stature. We must trust God for grace to minimize teaching opinions and personalize dealings and return to doctrine. Opinions will produce an aberrated Christian. Believe what I tell you. No matter how supernatural the encounters are, they will have to submit to it is written to profit the believers. So, no matter what my spiritual experiences are, no matter the prophetic inclination or the apostolic inclination, I must be able to bring all my experiences only as support systems. The Bible being the basis for communicating doctrine. For as long as our pulpits are filled with well-intentioned, well-meaning opinions, we are going to produce all kinds of people who do not look like Jesus. We don't have to be fake. You don't have to be fake to destroy people. Once you do not know the way, you will produce something else. I can be a very sincere person. Tell me one, one, one meal in Ghana that everybody loves. Give me a name. Oh, uh, all right. I think I'll walk with Jollof Rice. Praise the Lord for that bailout system. I thought it was a name I would struggle to call. Now, listen. So, if you, as, as anointed as you think I am, if I cannot cook and you put me in the kitchen to prepare Jollof Rice, for everyone here, chances are that I will mess up both your time and that opportunity. Now, that does not mean I am evil. I intend to bless you, but the wherewithal, the know-how. So, just being a sincere man of God does not mean you will bless people. Just being an honest man of God that is void of deception does not mean you will bless people. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Can I tell you this? Respectfully, let me observe this, and I do not mean to insult your pedigree or your intelligence. We must return back and become sound students of doctrine and scripture so that our communications are grounded and then we'll be able to produce results that are transgenerational. Now listen, I'm not speaking to Africa as a stranger. I am speaking as one who is part of the continent. We have to minimize superstitious Christianity and get to a point where our altars become, even though we are gifted, even though we have access all dimensions of the prophetic and the apostolic, we must have the maturity and the discipline to exalt the word of God beyond our individual experiences. Listen to me. As I'm standing right here preaching, only God will tell you the number of things I have seen already. But the discipline and the self-control to shelve those things and ensure that believers are grounded in doctrine, then the gift can become an added advantage. For a long time, Israel did not have the true God and then a teaching priest. The gifts of the Spirit can attract people. Signs and wonders can bring people but let me tell you this, only a sound teaching grace that is doctrinally based can build believers to a point of stature and maturity. Are we together? Now, one of these, my dear um, ushers, so or all these gentlemen, please come. Let me use you as an example to buttress a point. Any one of you, please come. Come. Anyone. Thank you. Watch this. Assume with me, for instance, watch this gentleman. If this gentleman gets saved in the average African church or today's church, after three or four years, 
I should be able to probe his spiritual understanding and find out what has he learned in addition to that encounter. The average believer, if we random pick the average believer across Africa, he will not be able to defend the faith that he is now in. Not because he or she is bad, but they have not been methodically mentored. What do you know about prayer? What do you know about the word of God? What do you know about the blood of Jesus? What do you know about doctrine? Listen carefully. What do you know about purpose and destiny? And I will give you pastors after my heart. Once they are not after my heart, a good shepherd lays down his life. A bad shepherd can eat the sheep when he's hungry. Now listen, listen. Can I tell you this? Let me put a disclaimer here. As I teach, do not point fingers at people. You know you have grown when you can allow love to even rise above revelation. The hallmark of maturity in the kingdom is not knowledge, it is love. So whilst we are correcting these things, don't point fingers at people and say, tell them, God is speaking to all of us, including me. Hallelujah. Don't go back to your assemblies and hear a man of God talk and he's making some of these mistakes we are observing. Then you now begin to dishonor people and point fingers. Any revelation that has to make you lose honor to communicate it is not accurate. Are we together? That any revelation that will require you dishonoring the body. I wish I had time tonight. I would have taught you four major encounters that every believer must have to gain stature and maturity. Listen, no, 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 not. Let me just give it to you in one line. Number one, an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God, in that order. Number two, an encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. Number three, an encounter with the word, not as the person, but the logos, the modus operandi of the kingdom. And then number four, an encounter with the body of Christ. If you do not have these four encounters, you cannot rise to stature and maturity. All of them deliver different products. An encounter with the Son of God is the system for administering eternal life. Apostle John said, this is the record. This is the testimony that God had given us eternal life. And he says that life was so constructed that until you encounter the son, you cannot have that life. And then number two, the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Even though the Holy Spirit plays a role at the new birth experience, you need to encounter the Holy Spirit in his office. Jesus was teaching and he said, I have many things to tell you, John 16, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, that he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but that whatsoever, he will show you things to come. The spirit of truth. That means trust whatever he tells you. There is no lie, no guile, no deception. He is the spirit of truth. The Bible also calls him the comforter, the paraclete, an extension of the ministry of Jesus. That the world is not able to receive of him for two reasons. One, they cannot see him. Is that true? Yes. It says, but you know him, for he is with you and shall be in you. Now he has come to live in us. The Holy Spirit you must encounter the person and the office of the Spirit and the Lord walking with them. Confirming the words with signs following. The third encounter, like I stated, is the encounter with the Word of God as the logos of God. Not just as the person, Jesus. The modus operandi of the kingdom. The cure for ignorance. Spiritual authority is derived 
from your comprehending the word of God is the word exousia, the capacity through knowledge to stand in the stead of another. Just because you have encountered Jesus does not mean you will be able to command authority and power in this kingdom. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. I say to one, go and he goes. Come and he comes. Do this and he does it. We must submit to the word of God. Ignorance will defeat any believer. Ephesians 4 and verse 18. Paul mentoring the church in Ephesus. He said, having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. In fact, the assignment of Satan, who is the God of this system, is to blind the minds of people. It is such people that the word of God becomes null and void. It becomes unprofitable. So what then is the assignment? Listen carefully. What then is the assignment of a true man of God as far as the communication of sound doctrine and the building of believers within a territory is concerned. Ephesians chapter 3. Be patient with me please as we read to 9. The real verse is verse 9 but let me start from verse 3. Ephesians 3 and verse 3. Is God helping us? How that by revelation Paul is speaking now. He made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, uh -huh, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not known to the sons of men, but now, everybody say now, now is revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, jump to verse 7, Whereof, that means by reason of this mandate, I was made a minister. So this was the whole goal, qualifying me to be a minister. According to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight, I who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. If you are a Christian, read the first five words you see in verse 9. One, two, read. And to make all men. Wow, stop there. To make all men see. There is a grace that should be on every man of God that can make all men see. Regardless their level of educational limitation or otherwise. It is a grace that can make all men see. The grace that makes all men see. You must covet that grace. And when it's time for impartation, please open up your heart. We're going to do a very fast one tonight. Open up your heart to receive the grace that makes all men see so that when you begin to communicate the grace that makes all men see is beyond oratory is beyond linguistic prowess it's an activity of the holy spirit through you to men that causes spiritual illumination their minds are open and regardless the level they are able to comprehend with the saints everything you are communicating so if this man gets saved one year after his salvation I should be able to probe into his spiritual understanding and I should be impressed what do you know about prayer and what role does it play as far as the building of the believer is concerned and providing for kingdom come what do you know about the word of God what do you know about character what do you know about the house of God what do you know about the body of Christ what do you know about the forces of victory given to the believers the word the name the blood touching and agreeing what do you know about giving and receiving what do you know about God's principle his economic principle what do you know that makes for longevity what do you know how can you what do you do if the devil attacks you it is on the strength of these mysteries you can say you are matured. Maturity is not an impartation, 
There is no gift of growth. No. Read your Bible. There is no gift of growth. The first man who did not grow got God's program in, in, in he got God's agenda in trouble. And from that time, Adam, every man had to grow, including Jesus. Adam was the first and only man who did not grow. He arrived as an adult. And you see the trouble we got into because he did not grow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God is counting on us to obtain grace. There's no time to teach on the third one, laws. I'll leave that for the members in parliament and the government people to be able to help us because we have to pray. There is a lot for us to do tonight. Listen to me. Haven't communicated to you the need to prioritize God and the need to have a territory that is filled with men and women who are sound and accurate in doctrine. Can I tell you one? Maybe I should add one last thing to seal up this point. Now, denominationally speaking, and I don't mean to create any controversy, I'm sent to the body of Christ. We may differ in areas here and there, but can I tell you, there are doctrinal truths that once you are a Christian, regardless the denomination, it should not be different. The Bible says these are the things that are most surely believed among us. Give us Luke chapter 1, the first four verses. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Let me read the first four verses. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed. There are things that should be most surely believed. Verse 2. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Uh -huh. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of how many things. That means there is such a level of accuracy in the spirit where you can have perfect understanding. As far as the dimension of grace communicated to you is concerned. Let's finish the scripture. To write unto you in order most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. That means you should not just believe it just because a man of God said it. You should have so much illumination. It should be an encounter with the word of God to a point where you can say, I now believe it, not just because my pastor taught it, not just because my man of God believes it. I have found it to be true by revelation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Now, for the sake of time, we are going to pray and I'm going to do three things very quickly. Number one, we are going to pray for the sick. I believe in the power of God to heal and to touch and to bless. Number two, we are going to pray that all those who are under the yokes of darkness, Jesus in Luke chapter 4, took up the scroll of Isaiah, the Bible says, it was given to him for to read. He found the place where it was written concerning him and he began to quote it. He read it and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It was the messianic prophecy of Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says, because he hath anointed me. To anoint means to ordain, to legitimize an operation. He has legitimized me to preach glad tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Can you imagine this? That there are people who, although physically they are walking, but in the realm of the spirit, they are bound in prisons. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. I like this now. Verse 3. The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Do you know what that means? To fix the date of their liberty. Because the Bible says whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. That is authority. That is dominion. Next verse. It says to give them beauty for ashes. Let's go back to three. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So God wants to be glorified in our lives. And one way he's glorified is when the encumbrances and all the things that impede our growth and our excelling in the kingdom, when they are taken out of the way and we find joy, in our joy he is glorified. Because he says, he that told you have asked for nothing. He says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Someone's life is about to change. Just one prayer point and then I'll take a few minutes to minister. Let your heart be opened. Your life is about to change. One prayer point. Father, everything that does not name the name of Christ in and around my life, it must drop right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray over your church, over your region, over your family. Go ahead and pray. Is someone clapping his hand and praying? Shepakatoskada. Kempre tekato segete pakatakada. Kempre deskoto shatela kata praskete belekata. In the name that is above all names, we decree and declare. Wherefore God hath so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Outside, pray. All the overflows, pray. New dimension of grace. Everything that is not consistent with the character of the Christ must leave my life now, must leave this region now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. Who is Janet? Is there such a name? Anyone with that name, Janet? I just want to speak a word now. The Lord just mentioned that name. Janet, you are wearing a yellow top. This is what I'm seeing. Is there someone like that? Please verify. Do we have someone to verify? Janet, is that her name? I want to pray for you, my dear. You believe in Jesus Christ? He brought you here to lift you. He brought you here to honor you. This is what you get. You don't find this in a bank. You don't find this in an institution elsewhere. It is only in the house of God that you find the capacity to liberate destinies. I stretch my hands and I pray for you, my dear, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Everything that does not represent Christ, oil is being poured on your head now. And I decree and declare right now, be free from every oppression of darkness. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, and I release you 
that everything that has tied you down and tied your family down in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God let it give way right now never to return in Jesus name I pray amen and amen hallelujah I'm hearing is there a name like Kwame is there something like that is it Kwame 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 Did I get that right? Is it cool? It's a, it's a, day, a Saturday born. A, huh? a Saturday born. A it's, male Saturday born is coming. Oh, that's what I just... Yeah, I'm also coming. Oh no, that means we're going to have, we're going to have a, I thought it was the name of a person. Okay, let me just pray, Maso, you return back, we have a lot to do. Just stay where you are, if you're born, many people were born on Saturday, I can imagine. In the name that is above all names. Now, there are three of you standing here right now. I'm seeing fire just coming. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming on three of you right now. Three of you, take that fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, new dimension of grace, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, as you drink of this ancient fountain, may God work wonders in your life. In the name of Jesus the Christ, may God work wonders in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God work wonders in your life. In the name of Jesus, I don't know if it's a guest that came, but I'm hearing Marianne. Who is Marianne? Marianne. This is what I'm hearing. Marianne. Marianne. You are wearing like a black gown. Right down. Marianne. This is what I'm seeing in my vision. Is there someone like that? outside not the overflow outside but those who are outside there are two people there the power of God is coming upon them right now with a loud shout I don't know how you are going to bring them here but there is a prophetic word for them two of them outside the overflow that the camera just showed not too long two of them right now the power of God is coming on two people there and the Lord is saying he's shifting you to a new season Please, if you can bring them, I release that grace right now in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. My dear, in the name that is above all names, I want to pray for you. I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit and the Lord is saying I should speak to you that it will happen speedily. This is what I'm seeing. Every time God shows me a vision like that, it means that God is lifting people. You believe what I'm saying? I stretch my hand towards you right now. May that anointing come upon you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why is she here? Same thing. Bring the two people outside. Shali Salima Haskadiva Rakusia. Rada mana shana kadarus kadila haparia dehasia shana gada bada kata pranda gada gete bala daba. Now, please, just outside. I'm watching you now. I'm going to pray for those inside, but I'm praying for those outside. Those outside, lift your hands. I'm seeing fire coming, and people will start running out. Hold them and bring them out. Don't. No. 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 I'm not saying to come out. Please go back. I will pray for you. The power of God will come on them. Please bring them out, those under the anointing. I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, take that fire now. Take that fire now. Those outside, please help them bring them out. I'm seeing there are people, the hand of God is marvelously upon them because I'm going to pray that same prayer for those inside. Whether you're an usher or not, please bring them outside. I decree and declare 
in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. Now, let me pray for those who are in here and all across. There is the grace for speed that can advance a man. The Bible says, and the hand of God came upon Elijah, and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab. I decree and declare, please, hold on, please, you don't have to come forward, don't worry. Just those under the anointing, if you can bring them out. I decree and declare, whether you are an usher or not, please help whoever is at your side, because people will start running by the anointing. I decree, at the count of three, may that mantle for speed, Ghana, take that grace, take that grace, take that grace, no more delay, standing under the grace of his imminence, I decree and declare, everyone held down by the spirit of delay, I come with the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic, advance by the spirit of God, advance by the hand of Elohim, advance. I just saw a vision, respectfully speaking. I saw one person at the minister stand here. The power of God is just coming on you. I don't know who, respectfully speaking. Just, at, I don't know who, but I just saw light. Just hitting one person here at the minister stand. I don't know who that person is, but the Lord is saying you are drinking of an ancient fountain and it will be a new season for you. And I declare, may that be so for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. No more delay. Someone pray. I challenge delay from my life. In the name of Jesus, it gives way by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spiritual advancement, advancement in every area of my life. I want to teach you a very simple song. Hello, Madonna. Hello, him. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Now, please pay attention. Listen to me. Listen to me. I want to pray. There are people here. God is calling you into deep dimensions of the prophetic. But it looks like your, your perceptions have been hazy. You are not able to step into that grace. In the name that is above all names. Right now, everyone who is called into this dimension, spring up all well. Open Hita and Tita. Let the fountain of the prophetic. Right now, I decree, take that grace. Take that grace. It's the heritage of your region. So I stand in faith and I decree and declare an activation of that grace. Outside, inside. Arise in power. In the name of Jesus. prophetic dimensions the seeing eyes and the hearing ears the seeing eyes and the hearing ears the Lord is imparting grace the seeing eyes and the hearing ears hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing someone this is a choir stand there's someone there the Lord is saying he's bringing restoration. I'm going to pray for everybody. But that anointing is coming on someone at the choir stand right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord is saying he's bringing, help them, help them please. So they don't injure themselves. Restoration. I see an intercessor's mantle. I see an eagle. 
this is what I see. There are many people who are drinking of that mantle of an intercessor at the count of three, inside and outside. May that grace rest upon you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. The intercessor's mantle in the name of Jesus. The grace to travail. The grace to travail. Hallelujah. Listen. When Saul, the son of Kish, went to look for his donkey, when they met Samuel, there were three things that Samuel said. Number one, he said the donkey that you have been looking for has been found. Please, if it's alright for me to pray, I just saw light coming here and I saw two people here. That the power of God is just touching you and the Lord is saying he's bringing help them oh dear in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who but please if I'm if I'm if I'm allowed to pray I just saw light and God is I'm seeing people rising on ladders just climbing I impart that grace right now in the name of Jesus to all who have come take that grace from the front to the back take that grace now in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for the sick now. Wherever you are, you are trusting God for a miracle. I want you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for. Everywhere, all over this place. If you came with someone, you are trusting for a miracle for that person very quickly. We're about to pray. One of you here, I just saw light coming on you. I don't know who are these people here, but there's one of you. Take that light in the name of Jesus Christ. Illumination by the Spirit. The Lord is opening your eyes. High level spiritual illumination. This is what the Lord is saying. And I stand upon this grace in this house and I minister it to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lay your hands now. I have to pray. Do you have commissioners? Commissioners. I'm hearing commissioner. Is there anybody here who is a commissioner? Who is that? Your life is about to change. I don't know you, but there is a prophetic word for you. Blessings to you, ma'am. Can I pray for you? Because I'm the Lord, I had the name commissioner. And I'm looking and the Lord, you're, you're a commissioner too? Is it all right, sir? Okay. What's the name, ma'am? Huh? Yes. Okay. I want to pray for you because... Now, I'm not one who will come and stand. I won't come and embarrass myself. There, there is discipline to the prophetic and will not just speak carelessly. But I want you to go and write what I'm about to say. I don't know you, madam, but this is not the end of where you are staying. I'm seeing you have a very far journey. Very far journey. There is the hand of God that is upon your life. And God is going to move you by his spirit. Sir, I'm going to pray for you. And among the many miracles... I see God taking something out of your body. This is what the Lord showed me. That he's taking something out of your body. And then he will honor and preserve you. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ. Standing on the grace on his eminence. 
in the name that is above all names, I pray for you. You see, the privilege of the prophetic and the priesthood is a kingmaker anointing. You may not become a king yourself, but you enthrone and dethrone kings. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord honor you. Sir, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the privilege of the election of grace, I stretch my hands and I pray. In the name of Jesus, everything that needs to leave your body, let it leave right now. And may the Lord honor you and honor what you do in Jesus' name. Ma'am, I want to pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you are stepping into a new season. I'm saying this to you, that this level you are, even politically, it will not be the last. God is honoring you and God is lifting you. Therefore, I release that grace upon you. And I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead, that you will rise to a new level in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Amen and amen. Let's pray for the sick now. Hallelujah. Please lay your hands there. I want to pray for you. Jesus commanded us in Matthew chapter 10 when you read verse 1 and then you read verse 8. He gave us power against unclean spirits. Power against. That means the power should not rest anytime it sees anything unclean. I want to pray for you. If you have never believed in a miracle, if you have never believed in the healing power of Jesus, please, I want you to believe. For it is true that he heals. It is true that he is a healer. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. That is who you are. Agree with me as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shout a louder amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now I decree and declare. By the authority that is in the name of Jesus. That every spirit that is back of any infirmity. Just help those under the anointing. You don't have to bring them out. I decree and declare that every spirit that is not of the Christ responsible for any and all kinds of infirmities be gone right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed now help them be healed now i minister the life and the power of jesus to you be healed now be healed now help that lady please that lady running help her someone hold her so she doesn't enjoy herself be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus every blind eye here be open now every deaf ear in the name that is above all names be open now if you put someone on crutches or wheelchairs stand now in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every born condition I cause it right now I cause it right now I cause it right now heart palpitations the Lord is healing heart palpitations be healed in the name of Jesus there's someone you have a growth at the back of your neck I command that growth to disappear right now peptic ulcer in the name of Jesus be healed rheumatoid arthritis be healed in the name of Jesus um, the Lord is showing me someone I don't know what problem you have with your heart I, I, it may not be a hole in the heart but there is, there is a very serious heart condition wherever you are the power of God is touching you right now ulcer peptic ulcer the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ all kinds of growths lump in the breast fibroids and every kind
kind of demonic growth, I command it to disappear from your body now. Liver problems, kidney problems, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a gentleman, I don't know if it's a sprain or something around your limbs, but this is what I'm seeing. You have, there is a serious problem. In fact, when you walk, sometimes you have to stop because it looks like your kneecap is shaking. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be a miracle for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I declare over you, be healed now. Be healed now. Two more things. Now pay attention to this prayer. Hmm. The Bible says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. Then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Can I tell you, most of the challenges of men are related to activities of demons. And there are three levels according to scripture of deliverance. The first level is casting out the spirit influences behind those infirmities or conditions. The second level of deliverance is called deliverance through transformation. Where now by the power of God's word, you are able to recalibrate the spiritual understanding of that victim so that he's in a position of advantage where he will not give the devil chance to return back again. And the third level is called the discipline of conformity where you now have a role to play in partnership with the Holy Spirit to walk in keeping with the principles that guarantee your immunity. Are we together? So I want to pray for you. There are many people here, inside and outside. There are age-long captivities. Those of you outside, lift your hands also. I want to pray that every other name that is not of Christ, at the count of three, you are going to shout Jesus. And hear me please, whether you are an usher or not, there are people who these spirits will leave and I want you to do well to be your brother's keeper. Let me pray. Ah. In the name that is above all names, I declare that any spirit that has found access to anyone's life and destiny that is not of the Christ, by this shout of the healer, as you shout that name Jesus, I decree and declare by the mystery of the blood, that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Let there be complete deliverance. Are you ready now? One, my God. Two, three, shout Jesus. Now I command that spirit out of their destinies now, out of their lives now. Every demon, every activity of diabolism, necromancy, manipulating the powers of the second heavens, to tie down men, help them please. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you from every and any form of captivity. Be released now. In one minute and in prayer, clap your hands and declare your release. Declare your release by the power of the Holy Ghost. Declare your release. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let there be an exodus from captivity into the liberty of the sons of life. Be free, be delivered, be free, be delivered. In the 
name of Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Let me have your attention, please. When I came, please listen, just a moment. I want you to pay attention to what God is doing. I came into this city by the privilege of God's grace day before yesterday and I had the honor by the permission, the gracious permission of His Eminence to go around this campus, I was awestruck by the activity of prayer and the level of spiritual investment that goes on here spiritually. But the part that blessed me the most, just help those under the anointing. I was granted the honor of visiting the prayer tower, the prayer mountain, and Oh, that's a video. When I got to this place, I was humbled and broken first and foremost by the level of spiritual investment to build a place, a tower that will become a prayer control room for the nations listen to me this man who is talking to you by the privilege of God's grace I'm not in ignorance as far as territorial revival and dominion is concerned I am a student of revival I have studied the moves of God I by the privilege of the election of grace I can tell you that I have an understanding of the ingredients that make for the sustainable move of God Moses ensured to build according to pattern that was a group of gentlemen very I, I, it, was, it was a marvelous marvelous time and his eminence granted me the gracious but when you truly see you don't doubt what you see this is remarkable and you know this is consistent with what God is doing not just in Ghana the most profitable activity believe me, that I did. And, uh, that I spent some time praying with your prayer warriors, encouraging them and pouring oil over that ground to decree and declare. And I had the rare privilege of a discussion with his eminence and I was broken afresh by his desire for intercession. I think it's an impartation that I received myself. Pay very close attention to what I'm saying. The Bible says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. A house of prayer Yesterday, I left a prophetic word over Ghana that a season is coming to an end and that another one is beginning. You see, before you believe a man, study about him. Are we together now? Yes. I fear God. I've seen the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not stand here and insult your pedigree and your spiritual experience by telling you something that is not of God. If it's not of God, I would teach and go and sit down. But I can tell you, Ghana, a season is coming to an end. 
and the emergence of a new season will happen so fast. It will happen so fast. I saw the Spirit of God going across campuses, schools, homes. There are mothers who even in their old age, they will become intercessors after the order of Anna the prophetess and stand upon their watch and pray. Please help them, help them, help them, help them. Just help them. Hallelujah. And two things struck me immediately. When I saw that, I was broken and I made up my mind that whatever contribution that I as a person would have to make to see that project Hallelujah. I would be a hypocrite if I come here and talk about such a project and the move of God and then not commit to being part of it. That would be hypocrisy. But I believe in what God is doing. Are we together now? And now listen very carefully. With the permission of his eminence, there are two things I want to do here very quickly. I fear God and I love you with all my heart. But there are two scriptures that the Lord gave me that I want to use in one minute. And then I'll give you an instruction. Scripture number one. Exodus chapter 25 from verse one. Do you want to sit for a moment? Please sit for a moment. Just help those under the anointing. Exodus 25, one from verse one. From verse 1. Please give it to us very quickly so that we'll hurry up. Exodus 25 and verse 1. The Lord spake unto Moses saying, verse 2. It says, speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly. Underline the word willingly with his heart shall you take. That means don't bother taking anything that is not willing. Now please listen to me. I made up my mind that I was going to be part of this project and then to honor his eminence, the father over this land by challenging a few people to join me by the spirit, sincerely. I fear God, many of you have followed me I will never come and stand on stage. This is not even something that I usually do. It is not, it is not. But you see, this man who you call his eminence, your father, my life has been impacted by his life and ministry. There is no, listen, and, and I mean no flattery. There is nobody who God is using graciously in the apostolic and the prophetic who will not say there has been a contribution to his spiritual life directly connected to the ministry of his eminence, the Archbishop. I say this with every sense of humility. Hallelujah. And where I come from, we have been trained to honor fathers. We do not just smile at them, we honor them. We honor them sincerely. We honor them truthfully. Now, the challenge with the body of Christ, especially the church in Africa, well, the church global, is that when it has to do with issues like this, the reason why people feel sad is because over the years, there have been all kinds of gimmicks and manipulation. Am I right on that? Where people are manipulated using the guise of whatsoever thing, you know, whatever it is. So every time people begin to hear about things like this, they generally fall back, not because they do not desire to give, but simply because the gospel and the truth of God's word has not been communicated with integrity and with truthfulness. He said, if there be any man, the building of the Lord's house will always come through the supply of resources from the saints who have an understanding 
and are led by the Spirit. Can I tell you, when you give out of manipulation in truth, there is no reward. Believe me when I tell you, there is no reward. Are we together now? The second scripture, Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20. Then answered I them and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. That it is because God is going to prosper us. So as an act of faith, we will arise and build. I look forward by the grace of God to coming to a completed prayer mountain and a cathedral it, and in the name of Jesus we agree that it will be done and that intercession will rise from that place to the nations of the earth hallelujah his eminence Archbishop Duncan Williams has been a blessing to all of us even in Nigeria and across the globe and let me tell you this I fear God most of you have followed me. It would be evil for me to come into this land and have the privilege of the honor that you have given me. You have given me an honor that I consider a national honor based on the things that you have done for me. It would be evil of me to not make a contribution to stand by this great father, this great general, and this veteran to see to it that this work becomes complete. And so, I made up my mind that I'm going to be the one to lead. Because if I do not lead, I'm not leading by example. But there are three categories of people very quickly. Number one is everyone. I want to challenge you and beseech you by the mercy of God. There are times in a man's life and there are times where God desires to move in the midst of his people. And he desires a resting place that will become a tabernacle for his power and his move. Can I tell you this? It will take willing men and women with revelation to say, I will be part of this. I believe at one point or the other, many of you have contributed in giving and in being part of the various ministry pro projects. But this is the first time I am making a call. I'm standing here. The first category is that everybody, whether you are inside, whether you are outside, whether you are following from Europe, from America, in fact, I know that there are several people who reached the protocol and reached several people and say, you have seeds you want to sow into the life of Apostle Joshua Selman. I received that seed by faith. Let's convert it and we'll sow it even for this project. <laughs> Number two. The second category of people that I want to challenge by God are men and women who God by his grace has put in privileged positions and you know that you want to make a significant sacrifice. I'm in that category. A significant sacrifice. Something that you know will contribute sincerely and seriously to this project. There are people seated there are people outside. There is no need manipulating you. As much as God has shown us mercy, I know by the Spirit that there are people here who have obtained mercy and help from God. And you see, part of the purpose of the blessings of the Lord upon the man's life is so that kingdom come can find expression. I have been a beneficiary and a recipient of the kindness of people who have stood by me in life and even in ministry, helping me to be efficient. The blessings is what some of you have received, even from the teaching. And so there is this second category of people. And for these people sincerely, if I'm given the permission, I, I want you to join me. I'm trusting God. And I'm saying this at the risk of being misunderstood. But I'm trusting God that God will grant grace that within this crowd, inside and outside, if God will grant at least a hundred to one hundred and fifty of us who will come and stand with the archbishop and say, as God has granted me grace, 
I want to make a significant commitment to this project. No coercion. This is out of revelation. I want history that my children and my children's children will reap from this sacrifice as prayer rises from this place to the nations. That is the second category. The third category of people are those who I know by the Spirit of God. They are in every nation. Business people, captains of industry, responsible members of parliament. I know that there are people who even individually, God has blessed them enough. They have the capacity to single-handedly write off the budget for this. No coercion, but it is true that there are people like that. For those people, for security reasons and for many other reasons, may I request, you are listening to me from across the globe, America, Europe, Asia, and here in Ghana and across Africa, you belong to this third category and you know that God has shown you mercy and you have been blessed by the life and the ministry of his eminence and God is putting in your heart. There are people who literally can write off checks of a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars and say, look, let it go for kingdom come. There are people who can do that. There may not be many, but in truth, there are people who can do that. And we have to be honest with ourselves first as the body of Christ and then as a nation that if and when God provides this kind of opportunities, if he helps us, we must be able to stretch our hands. For those people, I will specially request that there be a system to meet with the archbishop himself personally so that he will, you know, just pray and bless you. But for this second category of people, I'm not coercing you. I'm standing here as number one. I want to invite as many people. I'm trusting and praying sincerely that God will be able to find at least a hundred to a hundred and fifty of us. Please don't be emotional. If you don't believe in what I'm saying, that's all right. You will not go to hell and there is no cause coming on you. Are we together now? No cause is coming on you, no, whatever. There is no need telling you lies. But we are standing before the nation to show them we are responsible Christians. And there is no hiding as far as kingdom come is concerned, that when it has to do with building the Lord's house, it will come on the shoulder of priests. There are people here who want to make significant contributions. I'm releasing my faith to trust God for a hundred or a hundred and fifty people. If there are those people here, let me respectfully plead with you. If I would be allowed to have them come to the front here, and I will stand with you. Like I'm saying, there is no coercion. I want to pray for you and possibly speak a blessing over your life. I am doing this because I fear God. I'm doing this because of the burden for this work. This work can be completed. I will count one to five. Don't feel, don't feel embarrassed if you feel you are not coming out. But let me challenge you. If you know that God has shown you mercy, I want you to come and join me. I have made a covenant with God. And I prayed myself with all my heart. I said I will come here and I will not only say this, but I will stand to see that my seed speedily comes into this project. I want to be able to stand there and someday have the privilege of saying that for every life that was healed, destiny changed, nation transformed, that we were able to contribute to kingdom come. Wherever you are, a significant contribution. Please, I'd like you to come and stand out here wherever you are. I will count one to five whether it's the guests coming, the pastors, leaders. Don't say you are, you are in this ministry and I am a leader. That's not what I'm asking you. If you know that God has shown you mercy, please come and stand here very quickly. Please take it higher for me. Celebrate them as they come. Come, come to Jesus. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. 
Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want. Please think about what you are doing. I'm only calling for those who are coming here to make significant, significant seeds. Everybody will participate. I will soon give you room. Everybody is going to participate as God grants grace. But I'm trusting God for at least 150 of us. Apostle, I believe in the ministry of his eminence. I know that there are hundreds and thousands of people online. I'm going to guide you shortly on what to do. Please beware of scammers. I don't know if it happens here in Ghana. But when we make such announcements like this, we have to give disclaimers. Because there are people who cash in on the sincerity of God's people and now take advantage of them. Hallelujah. Now please listen. For all of you who have come, please make sure as you are coming out, you understand what you are doing. Don't just come out emotionally because chances are that when calls are made like this, sometimes people just come out emotionally and they don't do anything. They don't give anything. Will I be given the permission? Will I be given the permission to meet with these people and pray with them? I want to pray and speak over your lives. Hallelujah. I understand that there is a form here that you would be given. Listen, the truth is whether you give or not, nobody is going to carry a gun and pursue you. But let's fear God. Let's fear God sincerely. Okay, praise the Lord. I'm told that His Eminence has given permission to meet with you tomorrow before I before I leave. Will that be fine? Please, if if we can if we can come with, I want to encourage every one of you. Please come with your prayer request. Something you are trusting God for. We are not scammers. We are, we are not fraudsters. We fear God. I fear God sincerely. And this is a hallowed platform. I will not stand here to manipulate you. I am I'm going to pray over your life. And I believe that his imminence will also be there. When can we meet? No. What? 10. Okay. 10 o'clock in the morning. Is there a venue? Kairos Hall. Okay, so this is what will happen. Even if it means for me to delay my flight and to ensure that I meet with these ones before we leave, it is worth it for the kingdom. Hallelujah. But for now, I'm going to pray for you. Listen to me. My life changed when I made certain sacrifices in the house of God. There's no need talking about all of these things now. But I can tell you that this is what God helped us to do, to rise to where we are now. Rising in the spirit is with intention and with seriousness. And I promise you that as I minister to you and lay my hands on you, what will happen to you within one month, you will marvel and wonder at the power and the grace of God. Remember that this is not for show. We are serious about what we are doing. Someday Jesus is going to come and we will stand before him and give account of what we are doing. Hallelujah. For all of you, you are, you are being given a form now. Please, I want you to be people of integrity. I will speak a word over you now and then I will give the general announcement for everybody to be part of this project. This thing with the kind of influence and with the kind of grace upon our Father and this ministry, we can join faith together and make this thing happen in the shortest time possible. Are we in agreement with that? Father, I pray over everyone who has come to join me in this project of completing this prayer city. It is an honor and a privilege, oh God, to be able to to contribute in providing financial resources for your house. 
For there is nothing we have received except that which has come from you. I pray for everyone who is standing here. Lord, you are no man's debtor. Many of you are standing here and you are trusting God for all kinds of miracles in your corporations and in your lives. Some of you, even from this night, I release my faith with you by the God who called me and anointed me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy over systems and structures. I, I speak to the four winds across Accra, Ghana. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of priesthood, may the gates be open heater and teeter for your advancement. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. And I pray and ask that the Lord would bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please keep standing. I need someone to direct me on how our global family can be part of this. Because I know that there are people who are watching through Dominion Television. Some of them are following through Koinonia Global. And are saying, Apostle, I believe in what you have, you have said. And I want to be part of this, but I'm in Europe. I'm in America. I have to be part of this project. Is there, is there a way, is there an account or something so that we don't fall victim of scammers? Okay. Can we have, can we have the giving platforms on the screen? Please. NDW Ministries. NDW, NDW Ministries. Okay. NDW Ministries, I'm, I'm, I'm told. And these are the giving platforms. Hallelujah. Some of you want to come in $10,000, $20,000. You just want to write off this. And whatever it is that God has granted you grace, any significant contribution, I want you to believe God for it. And let's release our faith together to make it happen. Now for everyone, per adventure you were not able to join these people. There is no reason to feel bad. God is helping us and we're in different levels. Are we together now? I know that many of you have the heart to give, but there is no need coming here to frustrate yourself. I know that God will help us, and as he helps us, we will continue to rise and to give. But I know that there are people for sure who can do something. Let me encourage everyone right now who is in this place, that in the name of Jesus, if you believe in what I am saying, and you believe in what God is doing, let me encourage you in one minute as I speak over you to... So into this project, if you need to write maybe a memo to help you so that the church accounts will know how to reconcile everything, why don't we try the Prayer City project? Maybe we could write something like that. Am I allowed to use that? Okay. Okay, so and I'm told NDW Ministries, I think, is there projected. You can make all transfers. Please... Make sure that nobody scams you whatsoever. Make sure that the transfers go to this account. If you do not see this name, that is not the account. Just um, stop whatever transaction you're doing. Hallelujah. But let me pray for you. Everyone, let me pray for you. Those who are here, who have come out, and for everyone, I want to pray. I bow my knees to you, oh God the God of my covenant. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. Let me do the kneeling for you. You have anointed us by grace and you have given us the privilege to gather your people. And Lord, I have taught your people the principles of the kingdom. You have worked wonders in our midst, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, imparting all kinds of graces. And Lord, I bring before you the burden of of the prayer city that you have committed to his eminence, the archbishop. And Lord, we have come as responsible beneficiaries of his grace and of his ministry to stand with him and to stand by him to see that this vision becomes a reality. Therefore, Lord, I speak over Ghana, bowing my knees, that for everyone who has joined any of these three categories in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God may my God who is also the God of your father supply your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus I decree and declare 
that nobody gives and goes down. I decree and declare that nobody gives and ends up in shame. I decree and declare that nobody gives and regrets his or her giving. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not give and charge God with fraud. You will not give and charge God with dishonesty. May my God surprise you beyond your imagination. In the name of Jesus Christ, that by this time next year, for everyone who is here and who God has granted the grace to participate, return a thousand times better. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then for the final blessing over Accra, Ghana, in the name that is above all names, by the privilege of the election of grace, I stand upon the grace of his eminence and I declare over you, go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that everything that has killed your prayer life, your word study life, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be restoration for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your president. I pray for the members of parliament across all the regions in Ghana. May the Lord grant them wisdom and discretion. In the name of Jesus, we fortify the spiritual borders of Ghana against terrorism. In the marvelous name of Jesus, I decree and declare that everyone who is called by the name of the Lord and a son and a daughter of this soil you will benefit from the grace that is upon this land I pray for every church every man woman of God in the name that is above all names you will continue to fan the fire of revival in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every prayer group I pray for every Christian platform across Ghana in the name of Jesus be blessed I pray for all the citizens of Ghana, whether they are Christians, whether they are Muslims, whatever, we bless them with the blessings of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that let it be a new season for this nation and the role that Ghana has to play in the global revival, the role that Ghana has to play in the prophetic renaissance that is happening in Africa, may Ghana play to the latter. In the name of Jesus Christ, be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you in the name of the Father. I bless you in the name of the Son. And I bless you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So please, for all these ones, you may respectfully return back to your seat and we meet tomorrow. Ghana, I love you with all my heart. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. One minute. Please don't go. Keep, keep moving. Keep moving to your seats. It's important that those of you who took the envelopes, you come in tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in the Kairos Hall. Is the youth church right down there. You must come in with your envelopes to enter in. It's not another service. It's a straightforward thing. So there's a morning glory prophetic service will be going on here by Prophet Victor Kusibwatin. That will be happening in the morning here. But those who took the envelope will meet the man of God, the apostle, and after that you can come and join the prophetic service. But please take your envelopes with you. State whatever your commitment is on the envelope with all your information and that you will present at the gate to allow you to come in and after you will leave it on the altar. But there's one thing I want us to do quickly. Many a times we have men of God, women of God come and bless us and we receive all the blessing and we say bye-bye. I want us, stand on your feet. I want us to pray and I want us to bless him and use him as a point of contact to bless the fathers in Nigeria from Papa Deboye, Bishop Oyedeko, and Ayo, and all the others in Nigeria. Let's, let's pray for God's protection and blessings upon him. And I want the bishops to come and surround him 
and let's use him as a point of contact to send prayers to the fathers of Nigeria. Nigeria is very strategic in God's time, God's end time revival. Never forget that. If Nigeria gets it right, Africa will get it right. And Nigeria will. Amen. So we want the bishops to come. We want to pray and surround them all over. And I want everybody right now to begin to pray for him that he will move from glory to glory, grace to grace, and that God will preserve him and show him many, many, many decades of sweet victories and that he will run his race. He will finish his course. He will fight the fight of faith, the good fight of faith. He will keep the faith. Can you open your mouth, surround him with prayer and the songs of deliverance. Put your hands together. Those of you on television, online, everywhere, in Tassi, pray for him right now. Come on, open your mouth. Give back. I can't hear you. Give back. Give back. Pray for him. Use him as a point of contact to pray for the fathers of Nigeria. Leave prayers for the fathers of Nigeria, for him and the fathers of Nigeria, and even the fathers of other African countries, and for all those whom God is raising and are rising up across the nations and the continent of Africa. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and lift up prayer. I can't hear you. Push it one more time. Push it. Push it. Push it. Lift up your hands now. Lift up your hands all over the place. Say, Heavenly Father, from the throne room perspective, from, from where all are over heaven and earth is derived. We entrust, we command your servant and your son to your care and to the charge of your warring angels that it will increase from grace to grace, from glory to glory, that he will wax stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus that he will walk he will walk in the anointing and dimensions of the Holy Ghost such as no man of God from the land from which he comes or from which he came from has ever experienced before let his horn be exalted about the homes of all others in the name of Jesus make him a voice in this generation and let his voice echo in generations that are yet to come in the name of Jesus we deploy angelic escorts angelic assistants and proclaim before heaven and earth all enemy Make no mistake, you will not smite this one. Make no mistake, you will not circumvent this one. Make no mistake, you will not discredit this one. Make no mistake, you will not implicate this one. Make no mistake, this one will run his race. This one will finish his course. This one will keep the faith. This one will fight the good fight of faith. Make no mistake, this one will be satisfied with long life and see the salvation of God. And now I want everybody to command the finishing anointing, the finishing grace over his life right now. Put your hands together. Say, oh Lord, grant your servant, grant your son the finishing grace, the finishing anointing, finishing grace, finishing anointing, that he will finish his course, his mandate, 
in the name of Jesus, we surround him now with songs of deliverance, with songs of redemption. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we surround him now with firewalls, with prayer seals. In the name of Jesus, we command him now to the church of the warring angels that will preserve him and fight and war and contend for his mantle, for your mandate upon his life, that he will walk in dimensions of the oil of God and the anointing of God like the world has never known it before. In the name of Jesus, that it shall be said, there is a voice, that is an oracle of God in Africa for the nation of Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Bless him, Lord. Increase him, Lord. Be his shield, Lord. Be his guide, Lord. Saruda, while I akutu wahan, desai tu kada, se falu wahan duzaya, ey, kidibahas, wokutala hasada. Put your hands together and thank God. Please be seated, Dr. Robert Ambiakofi will receive our offerings for tonight. Thank you. Please be ready to give it to give. Don't forget the prophetic word the Lord gave me. I want you to keep this prophetic word. He said, tell my children, henceforth, the supernatural manifestation, provision, and power of God will become the order of the day. You didn't hear it, come on somebody. If you receive it, put your hands together and give the Lord a shout. Lift up your right arm. Say, oh my 